Hello friends, how are you? My name is Ari Thurger and today I'm going to talk about Viking cats. Well, this is a video I did not expect making it, ever. You see, Mr. Tico died, uh, my cat, and this channel has only one here. And those of you who have been here since the beginning, I'm sure you remember Mr. Tico. He was on the very first video and once in a while he would appear on my videos. He passed away January 2018. Uh, you are watching this video in April, I know, but I have recorded this video in January, only one week after Mr. Tico's death. So it's quite recent to me. He was 17 years old. I dearly miss him and this video is in his honor. And I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. All right, before we start, just a little introduction before we jump to Viking cats. Felines have been around for quite some time, but their relationship with us as domesticated animals is quite recent in the history of mankind. Cats were probably domesticated more or less 12,000 years ago, when the first farmers started to store their grain, which attracted many rodents, and rodents attracted cats. It was a feast for wild cats, and humans were happy, because these furry fellows kept the the little grain thieves away and the grain was safe. Thus cats became part of human communities and easily started to be revered and adopted as pets. Soon after there was an outstanding wave of cats spreading all over the world. They easily spread all over the Middle East and Africa and with the first maritime traders they came into Europe through the south and through the east. Cats caused great uproar in the human communities because before the introduction of these domesticated cats, prehistoric human communities already worshipped or had sort of rituals dedicated to wild felines. But being able to have these animals as pets, it was just great, outstanding. Thus, many deities connected to cats started to appear. For instance, in ancient Egypt, there was a great popularization of the worship of Bastet or Bast, a goddess of the home, love, fertility, joy, dance, women and secrets. A goddess with her cat-like head and a woman's body was considered as a benevolent deity. But in Upper Egypt, she was also worshipped in the form of her alter ego Sekhmet, the warrior lioness who was seen as the protector of the pharaohs and symbolically led them into warfare. The feline symbolization is present in almost everything concerning Egyptians. Cats were sacred in Egypt. If you killed a cat in Egypt, you could be sure that you wouldn't live another day to see the sun rise again. Well, there are other goddesses, of course, uh, such as the Celtic goddess Kredwin, a cat goddess or connected to cats. She was also a shape-changer deity and a fertility goddess. This goddess has loads of similarities with the Norse goddess Freya, or Freya, which was also a goddess associated with cats, having cats as pets, especially males, a goddess of fertility and, without a doubt, linked to women and magical practices performed by women. These three goddesses have a lot in common. Cats, fertility, magic and women. Which leads me to believe that there was once an important cult concerning felines and connected with fertility. But more of that on the next video where I will focus much more on that aspect. Cats have already conquered the internet with their cuteness and silly behavior. And maybe that was their plan all along. Because in the past, they have also conquered lands. Well, not likely, of course. But our fluffy friends spread across Europe, Asia and Africa, and even sailed aboard Viking ships. In Northern Europe, cats are very present in the Norse culture since prehistoric times all the way to the Iron Age. They were used as pets to hunt rats and mice, used for their skin and fur, and also magical purposes and sacrifices. And then, cats became most prominent during the Viking Age, 
because cats were also pretty handy when it came to dealing with rats and mice on ships, especially on long distance journeys. People took their cats on journeys everywhere. But why is this video focused on Viking cats? Because Vikings actually helped a lot in spreading cats all over the place. Well, cats have their importance in Norse mythology and were often connected to specific deities. Of course, I have to mention the goddess Freya again, and notoriously known as the goddess of love, sex, magic and fertility. In the Norse mythology, she has two cats that pull her carriage. And of course, there is that one tale when Thor visits Utgard and he tried to lift the gigantic Utgard as Loki, cat. It turned out to be a serpent, the Midgard serpent, which not even Thor could lift. Well, suffice it to say that in, the, in this tale, as well as Freya's cats, there, are, uh, there is a connection between cats and magic because Freya herself is also one of the few Norse goddesses to be closely connected to magic and Sedre, a type of sorcery which was practiced in the Norse society, closely related to shamanic practices, mostly by women. And well, I will not delve much into that subject here on this video because we are talking about cats, my dear friends. Anyway, there are other tales about cats in the Norse mythology. So it's safe to say Vikings cared about their cats because even the gods had them. And when cultures include a certain animal in their myth mythologies <laughs> or in their cultural and traditional code, which defines them as a people, it shows us that these animals were very important to these societies, which is why they gained a connection with the gods in the first place. With certainty, we can say that Vikings had cats as pets, domesticated just like our modern cats, because in archaeological context, the size of these cats is related to the type of life of a household cat. Wild cats are larger and their bone structure is much different, whilst domesticated cats are smaller and are nowhere near the size of their wild cousins. Vikings carried cats in their longships, probably for the same reason as everybody else, but maybe also because their connection to the goddess Freya. On the next video I will talk about this aspect, about Freya's cats and the connection with magical activities. But there is a clear connection between fertility and cats. And bringing cats to new lands, in the case of the Vikings at least, was probably to ensure fertility, not just of the land to have supplies for the new community obviously, but also the fertility of people, which was an important aspect for the first settlers raising a family, taking land and make a life. And remember that the Vikings came to Iceland and it was them who brought cats and in archaeological findings in Iceland we have hints of special fertility cults dedicated to Freya and involving cats. And of course there are other animals connected to magic but when it comes to animals connected to fertility rites and magic and also domesticated and easy to carry, well, cats really came in handy. And, well, the Norse brought cats into Greenland and to Vinland, North America. If cats really wanted to conquer the world, well, they found the best allies to spread their cuteness and mischief. Vikings. Alright friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I know, it's a short one, but it's a sort of introduction for the next video where I will talk about Freya's cats and the connection between feline rituals and fertility magic. And also, obviously, this is a video dedicated and in honor to my best friend who passed away, Mr. Tico, my cat. And wherever he is, I hope he is in Freya's loving arms. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed, see you on the next video and bye for it all.